How you guys doing? Welcome to Two Cents with Jay Richardson. I'm Jay Richardson, and here is my two cents on this week in sports. Everything starts Monday night. The Warriors versus the Raptors, game five, and disaster strikes for the Golden State Warriors. Kevin Durant, finals MVP, league MVP multiple times. Kevin Durant goes down with what appears to be an Achilles injury early in the game after playing on what we knew wasn't 100% healthy calf muscle, and it all happened, it all went wrong, and it, 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 it just brings to mind, you know, does this guy really listen to people that much? And I think the answer is yes. When you have a guy who you know for a fact is not 100% healthy, but there's all this pressure, and we know Kevin Durant's mentality at this point, right? You're talking about a guy who has a burner account to defend himself on Twitter and Instagram, a guy who fills up comment sections of nobodies, you know, of trolls, when he feels like he's not being treated fairly in the public eye. This is a sensitive guy. This is a guy that wants people to like him, wants to be, you know, he wants to be your king, right? He wants to be the hero, and he's not right now, and it's driving him mad. So what does he do? He puts on the cape, and he says, I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to save this team, and I'm going to show them why I'm the biggest reason the Golden State Warriors will be champions again this year. And he goes out. And I, I, I got to admit, in, in Kevin Durant's defense, so much pressure. When you think about watching Klay Thompson come off of that hamstring tear injury, which is a serious injury, and play and drop 26 points when you knew he wasn't healthy, it's kind of hard if you're KD to see that and go, oh, no. And everyone's just in your ear going, dude, we need you. Where you at? Where you at? The GM, the team, Steve Kerr is in these press conferences going, I don't even know KD's timetable right now. I'll let you guys know. You could see the sense of frustration, and it got to him. And for a guy like Kevin Durant, that's going to be difficult, difficult, difficult to digest without feeling like you have to do something. And what does he do? He goes out there, and he plays fantastic. Starts the game off beautifully. Jump shot after jump shot, looking like he's in rhythm, looking like he never missed a beat, and looking like the MVP caliber player that he truly is. Got a lot of respect for this man's game, but he overdid it. He went for a crossover. And boom, disaster struck. You could almost see the Achilles or the calf, whatever that was, rupture. And then we know they're both connected right there through the soleus. I'm not a doctor, but I did stand a holiday in last night. So he goes down, non-contact injury. And as an athlete, you can always tell, because I've watched multiple guys pop Achilles in football practice in the NFL and in college. You know when a guy's really hurt when they completely void the possession by tossing the ball aside mid-possession. That means whatever's going on in their body is way more important than that possession. I knew at that moment something was serious, and it was. KD goes down, huge, huge loss, and the team rallies. Why does the team rally? We're going to get to that right now. When KD went down, something interesting happened. Uh, it's a sports phenomenon, people call it mass crowd mentality, right? People get so caught up in the moment of the game, they forget the people on the stage aren't robots, they're human beings. They watched a human tear his Achilles and they cheered. The Toronto crowd actually cheered. One of the more disgusting things I've ever seen in sports. We've seen it before though, we've seen crowds cheer awful things. Why? Mob mentality, you want your team to win at all costs, but you forget. And you can see the humanity slowly seep back into the crowd as Serge Ibaka and Kyle Lowry clamored for the crowd to please calm down. Stop cheering this guy getting hurt. That's not what we want. And then the crowd came to their senses and they go, oh no. And they chanted KD. But by then, damage was done. What happened after that? Klay Thompson and Steph Curry went bananas. Why? They felt some kind of way. Their, 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 their comrade goes down. He's in tears. They're in tears. Kerr has to rally the troops, and these guys are inspired. You could tell they played inspired basketball the rest of that game, and in clutch moments, they were able to create a couple possessions for themselves, knock down two huge threes after a ill-advised, ill-timed Nick Nurse timeout, which has been talked about all week, so I'll leave it alone, but Nick Nurse versus Steve Kerr, bad matchup in the coaching column right there. So you know Steve Kerr's going to win that one. He's, he's dominating that one right now. However, Toronto still has a chance in the end you got six seconds on the clock. To me, best player, most complete player on the planet, other than LeBron James, has the ball. Kawhi Leonard, top of the key, double team comes from Andre Godala, and he kicks it to Van Fleet, who kicks it to Kyle Lowry, who throws the ball against the side of the backboard like Philip Seymour Hoffmore and along came Polly. It was a very, very ugly scene. What people missed, though, was Marcus Gasol missing the, the screen that would have freed up Kyle Lowry on Draymond Green, who slipped that screen beautifully, and as a former defensive player of the year, made a great defensive play uh, on Kyle Lowry. But 
It all speaks to Nick Nurse's issues as a as a you know a strategist. You do not want to have those two six one guys out there, those two guards, in that kind of a clutch moment. Where was Siakam? Where was Ibaka? You need longer athletic guys out there for that kind of moment. My opinion right there. This all leads to what I think is possibly the turning point in this entire series, right? Game five. Warriors get out there in Toronto, losing KD, crowd boos, Warriors rally, they win the game, they're going back to Oracle, Oracle's going to be rocking, you are not going to beat Golden State in Oracle Arena in a closeout, game six, not after what they just experienced from the Toronto crowd, the Toronto crowd made a huge mistake, they gave those boys life, they inspired them, and they're angry, they're going to play angry, and they're going to give you everything they got for their fallen brother KD, and now everyone's saying the same thing out of that locker room, let's win one for Slim. That's Kevin, and they're going to go hard for him. Now you look at a, a possible game six in Toronto. I'm sorry, game seven in Toronto. The one thing you do not want is a game seven against the Golden State Warriors when they have everything to play for, and they feel like their backs are against the wall with their fallen leader. And in Toronto, no championship pedigree, never won a championship. The whole state of Canada is about a week away from taking a huge L, all because they booed a guy that went down at the wrong time to the wrong team. Just what I'm saying, I think that's a possibility. People need to be ready for that because it's real, it could happen, and that would be perfect for the basketball narrative. It would be perfect for the year to cap it off because we all thought this would be an easy, easy win. And if this goes to a game seven, the only people that win most are us, the basketball fans. Cannot wait for that. We'll see how that plays out. Other news, small thing we all think, but we all kind of saw it coming. However, still kind of a big deal. Kyrie opts out of his deal to stay in Boston, right? Would have got $20 plus million dollars to opt in. He wants to be the man still. He wants to find his own team still. And the Kevin Durant injury has a huge impact on free agency. Why? Because now that Kyrie-Kevin Durant pairing is not going to happen like everyone thought it will. Will that change Kyrie's future? Will he decide to go ahead and go to Brooklyn by himself? Will he decide to go to the Knicks by himself? Or will he decide what we all agree is the best option? Head back out west. Put your ego aside and join the king himself Bend the knee to LeBron James and go win another title. Why? You guys go together like peanut butter and jelly on the court. Everything they do together complements the other. One guy is an absolute physical dominant presence, a freak of nature on defense, and can do whatever he wants. A basketball savant, he's been called. He will make the right pass. He will make the right play. And the other guy is a cold-blooded killer in the clutch. He will knock down the big shot. He will cross over anyone in front of him. And he will create when LeBron is gassed. And that's what he needed. That's what gave the Cavaliers life a few years back when they won the title. Yes, Kyrie closed the door, but LeBron was the engine that got them there so that the door could be closed. It's such a perfect tandem. It's such a beautiful combination. Kyrie, don't let your ego mess this up. Put that ego aside. Go be a champion out there. We have all learned you might not be the best player on the best team. That might not be the formula for a championship for you, and that's okay. Most 6'3 guards can't be the best player on the best team and win a championship. That's a normal thing. Don't feel bad about that. You are still a, an elite, elite player and a possible MVP caliber player when, when you are paired with the right player to complement your skill set. That player is undoubtedly King James. Please go do that. LA needs a title. I'm a huge Braun fan. He's from, he's from Ohio. Always loved the guy. I want to see everyone do well. But Kyrie, this is a big moment for you. Don't mess this up. And finally... You know, I'm a former Raider. It's kind of it's kind of hard not to talk about my Raiders when I can. They don't usually give you tons to talk about on the field, and they won't today. But who cares? HBO Hard Knocks has chosen the Raiders to be their featured team this fall camp, and I can't wait. Why? Are you kidding me? John Gruden. You got Antonio Bryant. You got Vontez Burfecht. You got Derek Carr. And you got Mike Mayock, former ESPN analyst, all in the same building trying to figure out what's going to happen, trying to figure out how to build a franchise, trying to figure out who's really in charge there. We all know it's Gruden. He makes the most money. That's always the guy in charge. Can David Carr and John Gruden coexist in the same building after some of the things that Gruden said about him? Can AB coexist with anybody ever? We're going to find out. Super talented, but we know a diva's going to diva at all times. And how many people will Vontez Burfick beat up in camp. Everyone, a few of them, a coach maybe, the GM, who knows? It's going to happen and it's going to be fun to watch and it'll be the best thing for the Raiders. Why? Because it'll take all the attention off of their lack of production on the field because the reality of it is like the Cleveland Browns, they're going to have an exciting offseason, but we always are going to question, will they be playing football in the month of January? My guess, probably not, but it's going to be fun to watch. 
That's been your two cents with Jay Richardson. Until next time.